Good morning everyone and welcome back to the channel. This is David Hyman, your tour guide in Israel. Today's tour is to the oldest part of Jerusalem. It is called the City of David, Ir David. Yeah, just to help you with your orientation, this is the wall of the old city and over there where the palm trees are, that is Dung Gate, the gate that leads to the Western Wall. And then you walk down the Dung Gate, you look for the sign that says City of David and you'll see this little street. So look where we are. This is Temple Mount. That's Al-Aqsa Mosque. Over there is the Mount of Olives. This is the Kidron Valley. And down here on this little hill where the red flowers are, this is the oldest part of Jerusalem. Why here? Because this is where the water source is. The spring of Jerusalem. The spring of the Gihon is right down there in the Wadi, in the valley. And therefore the city started right here next to the water source where we're going to follow and look for evidence of David's Jerusalem, the Jerusalem that was founded 3,000 years ago. The harp, of course, is one of David's symbols that he played musical instrument. And here it says in ancient Hebrew letters, Ir David. So we read in the Bible, in the second book of Samuel, chapter 5, how King David and his troops come here to the city of Jerusalem, which is inhabited by a Canaanite tribe called the Jebusites. So he comes probably from the east, from this hill over there. He attacks the city, conquers it, and turns it into the capital of the United Tribes of Israel, and names it Jerusalem, or the city of David. So in search for David's palace, uh, the excavations have revealed quite a few items. First thing I'm going to show you is this retaining wall. Okay, this structure is with no doubt 10th century BC, it, the dates fit. And, but you can see that it's not a defense wall because it has a, an angle. So what was it? Probably a retaining wall that ne was needed to hold up a big building that was on the top of the hill. The large stone structure, that's one of the corners of the large stone structure. Is this the remains of King David's palace? So it is a really large stone structure. So the floor was leveled and even plastered in certain places. In the large stone structure, they found a few things uh, that could be evidence. Uh, they found a stamp. Okay, the stamp was a seal. It was used to seal documents okay with hebrew writing on it this hebrew writing has the name of yehochal the son of shelemia we know this name from the bible from the book of jeremiah and one more item that was found here that may be evidence for this being uh, the royal palace of king david was this capital okay this is the copy the real one is in the israel museum this capital is called a proto-ionic capital illustration proto-ionic capital from the end of the first temple period okay these capitals were found <clears throat> in nearly all royal buildings from the first temple period in megiddo in shomron in, Me in Chatzor, in tel dan ramat Rachel, and also here in the city of david so this is not a hundred percent agreed by all, all of the archaeology scholars in Israel. Now it's up to you. Take the stamp of the officer of the court, the capital, the large stone structure, and the retaining wall, and you can decide for yourself if this is enough evidence to prove that we are now standing in David's royal palace in the city of David and you can come here and you can decide for yourself. This is a really important find. It's hard to see, you need a lot of imagination. 
Uh, this is what we call the four dimension house. The name Achiel appears in potsherds found among the ruins of this house. The house of Achiel is a four room house, typical Israelite dwelling. These homes, when they were excavated, were found full of objects that prove that this was a wealthy community. Four dimension house. Now, at the ancient cemetery of Jerusalem is across the valley. Under these homes, little tiny squares carved in the rock. Okay, here, they look like this. There, there, okay, two entrances. So now the path takes us down to the most fun part of the tour, which is all underground. And this is the uh, water system. You can see that there's actually three parts of the water system. Warren's shaft, Gihon spring, and Hezekiah's tunnel. Okay, we're gonna go underground, all down Warren's shaft, all the way to the spring. Mount Moriah, Temple Mount with the Dome of the Rock. And the City of David today, it's this narrow hill. There's the City of David on the hill. There's David's palace. And up here is Mount Moriah with Solomon's Temple. If there's war, you need to protect the water from your enemies. And therefore, either you go underground and fetch the water, or you bring the water somehow into the city. And that's what we're gonna see. Now we're gonna see the two water systems that were built here. One is around 10th century BC, Canaanite, and it's called Warren's Shaft Water System. And the second is Hezekiah's water tunnel. This is uh, Captain Charles Warren. He came in through the spring and crawled up the, the shaft. And therefore, till this day, it is named after him, Warren's Shaft. So this part of the water system is probably the oldest, maybe from the Jebusite city. So this is man-made, carved in the limestone of Jerusalem. This is Warren's shaft. Let's look, take a look down and see. This is 50 meters deep, and it reaches all the way down to where the spring was, the source, okay? So, uh, in 1867, this is the shaft that Charles Warren climbed up and found the secret entrance into Jerusalem. Why is this shaft so important? If we read the Bible carefully in the second book of Samuel, chapter 5, about how King David's troops occupied the city of the Canaanites, the Jebusites, it says that David told them to damage the water gutter or damage the pipe, the word in Hebrew, tzino, vaigaba tzino, touch the pipe. The scholars read that passage and said this was the water gutter that they used to penetrate into the city of Jebus. Who's they? Yoav ben Tsuya and the soldiers of David's army. So we can hear the water of the spring, the spring of Jerusalem has two names, either the Gihon spring or Shiloach. And uh, the spring is mentioned in the Bible, in the first book of Kings. And Sadok the priest went down and caused Solomon to ride upon King David's mule and brought him to Gihon. And Sadok the priest took the horn of oil out of the tent and anointed Solomon. And they blew the ram's horn and the people said, long live King Solomon, first book of Kings. So the anointing of King Solomon happens at this exact spot, at the Gihon Spring. This is where we're gonna start walking Hezekiah's water tunnel. The Assyrians are attacking Judea, and they come up to Jerusalem and they put a siege on the city. King Hezekiah, he had few years to prepare for this attack, but the most amazing achievement that King Hezekiah initiated was to carve a tunnel under the mountain and divert the water of the Gihon spring from the source to the pool. And this spring and the tunnel were found. We're gonna walk in them right now. This achievement was also mentioned in the Bible, okay? 
It says, this is from the second book of Chronicles. This same Hezekiah also stopped the upper spring of the waters of Gihon and brought them straight down on the west side of the city of David. So walking through the tunnel, it is 533 meters long. It takes about 40 minutes. It's one way. The water is 70 centimeters deep. It is dark. You need, you need a light, a flashlight. And from the spring, we're going to walk in the Hezekiah's Tunnel, which is the wet route. This is 530 meters long. That's about five football fields. So if you choose uh, to stay dry, because the water will reach your thighs. Okay, so you need your sandals, your shorts, and a light. It's possible is to walk through the dry route. This is the dry tunnel. tunnel. You, you can choose. So we're walking down these ancient stairs. This is the bedrock. There's the shaft. This King Hezekiah's project of the water tunnel actually wasn't needed at the end because the Assyrians uplifted their siege and retreated back to Assyria and the city of Jerusalem was saved. This is one of the most incredible finds of archaeology in Jerusalem because this completes the story of carving the water tunnel in the city. This inscription that was found, it's called the Shiloh inscription, it was found in the tunnel on the floor with ancient Hebrew letters on it. Look what it says. It says, the tunneling is completed. This is the account of the tunneling. And on the day of the tunneling, the hewers bore through one man towards the other, axe upon axe, and the waters flowed from the source to the pool, 1,200 cubits. This is an inscription describing how the quarriers, how the people, the workers, carved their way from both sides of the mountain and met in the middle and they decided to uh, document that moment in the Shiloh inscription. This is from the 8th century BC. It's one of the oldest Hebrew inscriptions we have from Jerusalem. The pool of Shiloh, Siloam pool. What they found here in the excavations is just a corner of the pool. This is from the Second Temple period, Herodian times. This is very possible the location of uh, the miracle of Jesus when he heals the blind beggar. Uh, he says to him, go to the pool of Siloam and take mud and put on your eyes and you shall see. And uh, here we are in the pool of Siloam. I hope you all enjoyed this tour of the city of David, the oldest part of the city of Jerusalem. So if you did, please give me a big thumbs up. Please subscribe to the channel down below. And please let me know where you'd like to go on our next tour of wonderful Israel. Until then, bye everyone, take care, shalom shalom, litrot.